Hello, my name is Suzanne Sankeezy Frey, and in this presentation I will be talking about the Oriental Chestnut Gall Wasp, Dryocosmus curifilus. This film is part of the Observatory Volunteers Training Programme for 2016. Here you can see the adult gall wasp with its black body, translucent wings and orange legs. It is only two and a half to three millimetres long, so very small, and its small size means that it is difficult to see. And so it probably won't be noticed, especially as it does not have a sting and is harmless to humans. Looking for the wasp then is not such a good idea, especially as there are many other native wasps that look very similar to it, and it would be difficult to distinguish between them in the field. The host tree is the sweet chestnut tree, Castania sativa, not to be confused with the horse chestnut tree. The sweet chestnut tree is the one with alternate simple leaves like those you can see on the slide. It also has very prickly nutcases and yellow flowers that are catkin-like and hang downwards. And of course it produces the sweet chestnuts that we bake and eat in the winter. The sweet chestnut is not native, it was actually introduced by the Romans two millennia ago, but has since naturalised here. This tree is widely planted and grown as woodland in southeast England, where we have around 18,000 hectares of it, including a thriving coppice industry, and is also a popular parkland and street tree. So here you can see some of the features of the horse chestnut tree. So the horse chestnut is not affected by the oriental chestnut gall wasp. And you can see that the leaves are completely different to those of sweet chestnut, as they are compound and palmate. The nutcases are prickly, but much less prickly than those of the sweet chestnut. The fruit of the horse chestnut is the conker, and the flowers on the horse chestnut are upright, as opposed to hanging down like those of the sweet chestnut. So the horse chestnut then is not affected by the gall wasp. This slide shows the distribution and spread of the gall wasp. So it's thought that the gall wasp originated in China, but we don't know for sure. It was first recorded from Japan in 1958 and it spread throughout Japan in just 25 years, where it has affected sweet chestnut production dramatically. At around the same time, it was rampaging through Korea, causing similar problems there. It was accidentally introduced into the USA in the mid-70s and was recorded for the first time in Europe in 2002. It's thought that the wasp was imported into Italy as an unwanted passenger on Chinese sweet chestnut cultivars in the mid-90s. And now, unfortunately, it has spread to Croatia, the Czech Republic, France, Finland, Spain, Switzerland, and many other European countries. It was found here in the UK for the first time this year, so summer 2015, in an ancient semi-natural woodland in Farningham Wood, Kent, by an amateur gall enthusiast, who sent a sample of galls to Ferrer for identification. Following this, the Forestry Commission led the response to the outbreak and the area was surveyed and disease management measures were undertaken. And shortly after this first finding of the wasp, an observatory volunteer found some more galls on six street-grown chestnut trees in St Albans, Hearts, and they were also confirmed as the Oriental Chestnut Gall Wasp. So the rate of spread of the gall wasp is around 5 to 8 kilometres a year. At least it is in Italy where they have large populations. The wasps are actually poor flyers, but a single wasp can be moved quite a few kilometres in the wind. There only needs to be one wasp to start an outbreak in a new area, as the wasps reproduce by a process that doesn't actually require males, and no males have ever been recorded. So populations can expand rapidly. So for example, in France, one site had three ghouls in year one, but by year three, 
the presence was widespread throughout the site. And this is because the wasps can each lay 100 eggs or so. And so the following year, there could be 10,000 eggs. And then the year after that, there could be up to a million eggs. And that's why there can be this rapid population explosion. So what impact does the gall wasp have on the health of the tree? The gall wasp is an extremely important pest on chestnuts worldwide, mainly because it can dramatically affect the sweet nut production. And commercial growers may expect yield reductions of around 50 to 70%. And really heavy infestations can reduce tree vigour and wood production and even cause death of the tree. There is also a visual impact and affected trees can assume different shapes because of epicormic growth, which is a typical response of the tree to tissue death. And heavy infestations can weaken trees and make them more susceptible to attack from other pests and diseases. And of course, I'm thinking of the sweet chestnut blight here, Cryphonectria parasitica as prior attack by the gall wasp may make it easier for chestnut blight to enter and infect a tree via the exit holes in the galls created by emerging adult wasps. So this picture just shows rows of sweet chestnut trees in a large commercial nut production plantation. The white fleecy matting that you can see on the ground here acts like a net to collect the nuts. And as I said before, the chestnut gall wasp can dramatically reduce nut production and this could be devastating to a commercial enterprise like this. OK, so here in the UK, sweet chestnut production is not a big industry. But with climate change, it may become more popular in the future. And we don't want this possibility to be taken away because of the chestnut gall wasp. The life cycle of the gall wasp includes one generation per year. During the summer, the females lay their eggs in the growth buds of sweet chestnut trees. And as I mentioned before, no males are required. So the eggs hatch after 30 to 40 days and the larvae remain dormant and overwinter in the buds. But in the springtime, when the weather warms up, the larvae become active and cause the formation of galls. And it is within these galls that the larvae develop into adulthood. So pupation occurs within the galls and the adult wasps emerge in June or July. And these adults live for around 10 days and they lay more eggs to complete the cycle. So in the UK, we may see slight differences in the symptoms caused by the gall wasp compared to those seen in warmer climates such as Italy. So, for example, in the UK, we have seen the galls mainly in the leaves rather than on the apical buds. But as the climate changes and if we become warmer here, then the patterns of infestation may become more similar. So what signs and symptoms should we be looking for to indicate the presence of the gall wasp? Here we have a small sweet chestnut tree that has been attacked by the gall wasp this tree was actually in France. And you can see that throughout the canopy, there are patches of brown dead leaves. And this was the result of quite a heavy infestation. Another sign and symptom that has been observed during gall wasp infestations is the retention of leaves around the galls. And you can see that quite clearly here. This is not always the case, but you should be aware that retained leaves in the autumn winter may be an additional indicator of the presence of the gall wasp. The main symptom and the most obvious one is the presence of galls in the canopy. Galls can be formed on the midrib of leaves like the gall on the right and on the leaf petioles like the one on the left and also in the buds on young twigs. Here again are some galls forming on the leaves. They start off as this bright green colour and can range in size between 1 and 4 centimetres and they're very distinctive indeed. 
Here again, you can see how large these galls can get, and again, you can see this lovely bright green colour of the galls. The galls themselves can be quite difficult to see in the canopy, especially when they are the same colour as the foliage. So we can look out for, or look instead, for distortion within the leaves. And you can see here how this leaf looks deformed and distorted, and this is a good indicator that the galls are there. Here again is a cluster of galls, all occurring on the same leaf, and again you can see how it causes this leaf distortion. Sometimes these clusters of galls merge to form one large gall. And here, with this distortion, you can see that the leaves are really bent sidewards, almost to right angles. So this is quite an obvious symptom to look out for. In this slide, you can see the galls forming in the apical buds. And this is typical of what we have seen in Italy and other warmer countries. And here, on the left-hand side, we can see a slight colour change as the gall begins to go a pinkish colour with age. In this picture, you can see this ready pinky colour developing in the gall. And this is a characteristic feature of the galls. So they start off bright green, then they start turning pink and eventually go red like this. And of course, the red colour makes them much easier to see in the canopy against the green of the leaves. On this slide, you can see a gall with two exit holes clearly visible. So it was from here that the adult female has chewed her way out of the gall to complete her life cycle. So this would have happened from May to the end of July, and the exit holes would be around one millimetre wide. And here you can see a gall that has formed on a twig. It is over a year old, so it has shrunk and lignified, and this, of course, would be a lot more difficult to spot than the fresh galls. These can remain on the tree for two years or more like this. Whereas the galls that have formed on the leaf material, so on the petiole or in the leaf lamina, senesce in the autumn and they fall to the ground as the leaves are shed. So here we have a gall which has been sliced open and inside the gall will be a single chamber or even multiple chambers where the larvae are feeding and developing. So you can see here, where the arrow is pointing, that there is actually a larva wriggling away inside the gall. There are no other gall-forming insects that occur on sweet chestnut trees, so if you do see galls on them, then it is quite likely to be those of the oriental chestnut gall wasp. You may, however, see this type of symptom on the leaves, causing a bit of distortion, but this is not the gall wasp, and we are still investigating its cause. So here I have included these photos of winter symptoms, so symptoms that we would be able to see in the winter months when the majority of leaves are absent from the trees. So what these photos are showing here is winter leaf retention, and this is occurring around the galls themselves. So the photo on the right clearly shows the leaf retention in the canopy and an interesting feature of these retained leaves is their scrunched up appearance which you can clearly see in the photo on the left. And here again we have retained leaves around the galls in a bit more detail this time and we can see that the galls themselves are hard, brown and desiccated or dried out and again, you can clearly see this scrunched up appearance, characteristic of leaves that have been retained because of the galls. And on the right hand side, where the arrow is pointing, you can also see an exit hole in the gall, made by the newly formed adult wasp emerging into the environment. So look out for symptoms like these in the winter time. So what biosecurity measures do we need to follow? Well, if you are sampling for the gall wasp, then please make sure that all potentially infested material is double bagged on site to ensure that no larva or wasps escape. And also, please remove all plant debris such as leaves and twigs from your clothes and boots and also your vehicles before leaving a site and just follow normal high risk biosecurity measures at all times. In this presentation, 
I have been talking about the Oriental Chestnut Ghoul Wasp, which is one of our observatory priority pests for the 2016 Volunteer Training Programme. Thank you very much for listening.